upstairs into the rooms of the novitiate, that is for the novices who were joining the Jesuit order. Now, in the 1500s, this was a new order of religion founded by Ignatius Loyola, who died in 1556. We've stumbled into a room. It's almost a, an act of, of, of shock, certainly surprise, to see what appears to be a, a young man on his deathbed. In fact, sometimes in the gloom entering this room, you really think that somebody's in front of you lying mm. uh, on a couch, a sort of daybed. Mm. And this is Stanislaus Kostka. He's a young Polish uh, novice of the Jesuit order. He died only aged 18, and he bore his terrible illness with great humility and strength, and uh, died with a, a vision of the Virgin Mary before him. Uh, this was made before he was officially declared a saint. This was made in 1703. What we see is a very richly carved and very detailed statue of a young man lying very naturalistically on a bed. Now everything is color here. It's all made of stone, but we have Sicilian jasper, we have a uh, sort of ochre colored marble, we have a deep black uh, stone marble for the clothing that he wears because he's a member to be of the Jesuit order wearing black and white pillows and of course the flesh is done in white marble. He's holding uh, an image of the Virgin and a crucifix and he would have originally had a halo which would have picked up that sense of, of yellow and uh, gold even more. And as I said, he's, he's naturalistic. He's not lying as if he has died and we're, we're watching a lying in state here. He is still alive or he's in the, in the moment of passing. And this was something that fascinated Baroque artists. Bernini, uh, who had uh, died by the time this was done, was really one of the pioneers in showing the transition the trapasso, as it was called, from life to death, those moments that you go from the earthly to the spiritual, from, from life to death, but death as a comforting, eternal thing to look forward to. This is very intimate, and that's why it has shocked, in, in a good way, so many visitors who come into this room. It's a very intimate space. It's, a, it's the quiet side of the Baroque. Baroque doesn't necessarily mean loud. It's life-size. It's as if we are attending personally mm -hmm. to this young man's death. And this was part of the art of the Jesuit persuasiveness, or the art of persuasion. Through example, through art, again through uh, readings of course as well, you are brought close to uh, what matters about the passing from life to death. In this case, humility and absolute unshakable faith. And the realism of this is just so moving and upsetting in a way. The, the way that he lifts his arm up to hold this framed image of the Virgin and clasps with his other hand the rosary and the cross. It's that, that moment of you know, something happening in front of you. In That's front of so you and that theatrical. we could reach out and touch. There's no, yeah. in the 18th, I think in the 19th century there was a, a railing around it because they didn't want people touching it. Now it's a matter of trust. We're not, we're not touching it, but we could. I'm just stretching out my arm. I could practically mm -hmm. shake his hand. The crucifix is a separate carved object and the rosary is a real rosary. Yeah. But if you look closely, details such as the eyes and the nails of his fingers and the toenails are carefully incised. So this is a, a very detailed work of art. Uh, while the, the flow of the drapery and the bed itself is, is slightly more dramatic and right. loosely cut. And I think that that's right. This is a, a work of art that's meant to be seen up close. And I was really struck by the, the thinness of the cloth as it's represented of his undershirt, of the collar and of, of that cloth. And just the way in which it's, it's not different from the collar that I'm wearing. And then, so there is this kind of immediacy. The pioneer in that sense had, had also been uh, Bernini. Mm. But we do feel privileged in that we're, we're, this is a very private moment that we're given access to. Yes. And so it's so interesting because during this moment, during the Baroque, you have the grandeur, you have the operatic, and then you also have this sweetness and this intimacy and this really sort of internal experience. But it's not a conflict. It's um, a spectrum of, of experience. And exactly. A spectrum of it's arranged like an ordinary life that can go from quiet to loud and then back to quiet, from intimate to public.